This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. In this video, we're gonna show you how we go about spackling some holes in the wall using a lightweight interior sh shrink-free spackle and to make it so you don't actually see these holes at all once you paint the walls. So patching these holes in the walls, these are pretty small holes and they're typically gonna be a quarter inch or smaller to spackle them with this method. And I got this lightweight shrink-free spackle. And one of the good things about this spackle is once it dries, it doesn't shrink. And a lot of other spackles, if it's not shrink-free, it's gonna shrink. And then you're gonna have to re-spackle it again to get it flat. But these are some holes in the wall made by picture hangers and hooks. And like I said, they're about a quarter inch or smaller. And if you start to get larger holes in that, then we have a different method that we actually go about uh, spackling and patching these holes. But I've just got myself a small spackle knife right here, got my spackle. And one of the common mistakes people make, well, they'll actually spackle a hole and just leave it right there using just their spackle knife. And because of the texture on the wall, these aren't smooth walls, they've got a um, orange peel texture on them. If you just leave it like that and then paint your walls, you're gonna see this flat, smooth spot on your wall right there. And it uh, doesn't look good and you can see everywhere where you spackle it. So once you spackle your hole, the next process is, is actually wiping away the uh, excess spackle around that hole and just having the spackle in the hole. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So I have these holes right here and just taking spackling them with my spackle knife. And I like a spackle knife that is actually flexible and this knife is nice and flexible so I can fill that hole and get it nice and flat. And I wanna just get that hole nice and flat and while this spackle is still wet, I'm just gonna take my finger and just wipe off that spackle around the hole so it's not filling in this texture no more. I'm gonna to try to give you a little bit closer view now of me spackling the hole right here. Just gonna be taking my flexible spackle knife, just fill that hole. You wanna just work it into the hole so the whole hole is filled. And then we're just gonna take and clean off that spackle around the hole just like that and you can have yourself a wet rag to just wipe your fingers off on that wet rag if you have a lot of holes to fill if you've got a smooth wall and there's no texture on the walls you can just leave it just like that and then go back if it's a smooth wall once a spackle dries you want to sand it and then once your holes are all uh, filled, you definitely want to go back and prime them before you paint. So there's a close-up look at the hole right there and it's got spackle all around the um, texture, filled in the texture, and if you just leave that the way it is, it's going to leave just this flue, smooth, flat spot after you paint it. So now while this is wet, I'm just going to take my fingers and wipe it off and I like using just my fingers but you actually can use just a wet rag to just wipe your hands on that wet rag once again if you have a lot of holes to do. And another quick tip, definitely you want to have a, a nice flexible spackle knife that's actually going to be wider than your holes. If your holes are wider than the spackle knife you're not going to get a nice flat um, nice flat smooth uh, patch over that hole and you could get lines to that patch so make sure your spackle knife is wider than your hole. So now I'm just continuing right along to spackle all these holes and once the spackle is all dry I'm going to go back and spot prime them and there is an actual spackle and primer in one that we use quite a bit and it's a product uh, made by 3M and you could, that product is right here you can see a picture of that product and that makes uh, one less step of this whole spackling, painting, and priming process. Once the spackle dries, it does not need to be primed. You can go right ahead and, and roll your walls. But if you don't have a spackle and primer in one, when you roll your walls, you're going to see that spot that you spackled if you don't prime it. And then uh, if your holes are bigger than, say, the size of a dime, and they're getting like a quarter size or bigger, you're gonna actually need to spray texture them so they actually blend into the wall unless your walls are actually smooth. These are an orange peel texture. We see knockdown textures, Sun Valley textures, smooth texture, but they're spray textures that will actually match your wall. So I do have a video on, on how to use spray texture. You can check out that video right 
there, you click on that video and it'll show you how to spray texture a patch. Once your patch has had a chance to dry, you definitely want to check it to make sure it doesn't need to be sanded. If it needs to be sanded, just grab yourself a sanding sponge. I like these square soft sanding sponges from 3M and then you'll just sand it and make sure it's flat. If you don't get a good flat uh, spackle on there with your spackle knife to begin with and it is um, even though you've wiped it off all around just you can just make sure and just hit it and this lightweight spackle sands really easy so just hit it a couple times make sure it's flat prior to painting and hopefully you enjoyed this video on how to patch a wall and we'll see you on my next video well don't leave my channel now stay tuned and watch one of my other really cool videos and this video right up here click on that video and that will take you to my video series of how to paint the interior walls on a brand new home and when you're done watching my videos and watching my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel it's a simple way that you can help support my making of new videos just click on my subscribe button right down here and once again thank you for watching my videos on the channel the idaho painter